Hey guys, it's Thomas here with TechnoVision and welcome to the next episode in our Spigot plugin tutorial series. In this episode, we're just gonna be setting up a very basic plugin that is functional and prints to console. And we're also gonna be setting up the plugin.yml which is gonna store all the information for your plugin. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is once you're inside of your IntelliJ program that we just set up in the first episode, come to your source folder here and you can toggle this uh, plugin or this project manager by just clicking this button here. Once it's open, right click on your source folder and hit new package. And we're gonna make this package the uh, directory to your source code. And we want this directory to follow a similar naming convention to what I'm gonna show here, but it really doesn't matter too much. Uh, in my case, I'm gonna put com dots, and then you want your name. So the name of the developer, Technovision, and then dots, and then the name of your plugin. So in this case, my plugin is tutorial, so tutorial. So again, that's com dot your name, dots, the name of your plugin. Hit enter. And once you have that package set up, you can right click new Java class. And you want this to be your main class where you're gonna put your uh, on enable and on disable methods. And we'll talk about that in a second, but the name of this class should be the name of your plugin essentially. So mine is gonna be tutorial, uh, but just as an example, uh, you know, I just released a plugin called home GUI. So in my case uh, with that plugin, this uh, class would be home GUI, something like that. Uh, so I'm gonna say tutorial because that is this video's topic. Hit enter and you will have this basic public class for a tutorial or whatever you named your plugin. So next we have to actually make sure it extends Java plugin. So it should extend Java, oh, Java with a capital J plugin. There we go. And it will say, please import me. You can hover over it, import class, and it will import from bucket.plugin.java. Now, if this doesn't work and you're not able to import Java plugin, that means that you did something wrong in the first episode and you should go back and fix that uh, because you seem to have not imported the uh, the bucket library. So if things did work out well, then that's good. We can move on. So inside of your class here, we're going to need two methods. So, and we're going to override both of them because they're, they come from Java plugin. So first you want to add override uh, and below this override tag, we're going to type public void on enable and uh, just make this a method real quick with some curly braces and inside of here is where all of the uh, commands all of the code that you want to write is going to happen that happens as soon as your plugin is enabled basically when the server starts um, so we can just bring this up for right now uh, we need to make one more we can actually just copy this whole these two lines right click copy and go down a few spaces right click paste and instead of on enable, we want to change it to on uh, disable. There we go. So as you can imagine, all of your code for when your plugin disables is going to happen here. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is create your plugin.yml file. So come up to your source folder here and it has to be in your source folder. It can't be anywhere else. Otherwise the file will not be read. So right click on your source folder, hit new file, and we're going to name this plugin.yml. Hit enter. And it's gonna say, oh, there's some missing uh, properties. We're gonna add those in a second. So this plugin.yml file is gonna hold all the basic information about your plugin, uh, like your name, the version, the author, and you know the API version, dependencies, all of that basic information, just so that Spigot knows it. And um, when it's loading your plugin, it won't you know crash. So first we need to add our name. So we can type name with a colon and just whatever the name of your plugin is. So again, if it was home GUI, you would put home GUI. In my case, mine is gonna be tutorial. And this is gonna be pretty much the standard convention for, uh, for .yml. You're just gonna put the, uh, the key, a colon, and then the value. So our next key is gonna be version, and with the colon, and our version, this is gonna be the version of your plugin, not Minecraft or Spigot. So this is most likely gonna be our first release. So I'm gonna put 1.0. But uh, if you'd like to have even more version control, you can put another 0.0 and then you can have like sub releases. But I'm just gonna put 1.0 just for uh, clarity. Next, we need to add the author. So author colon, and this is just your name or whoever else worked on the project. Uh, in my case, it's just me. So I'm gonna put Technovision. There we go. And uh, next we can add our main. So main with a colon. 
and this key is going to point to essentially where your main class is, where the on enable and on disable methods are. So in our case, it would be com.technovision.tutorial uh, dot tutorial. And I'll just type that out here. com.technovision.tutorial dot tutorial. So notice how this part right here is the pathway to our class. It's this file, uh, this directory, this package directory right here. And then the last one is dot and then the name of our class. So uh, make sure that this letter is capitalized or whatever letters in your class are capitalized are also capitalized here. All right, so the next thing we need is the API version. So type API dash version colon and this version number is actually the API versions, which means the, the version of uh, Spigot that you're coding on. So our API is 1.15, but if you type in 1.15, it's not gonna actually work because for some reason Spigot still believes it's 1.14. So uh, anything above 1.14, you're gonna have to type 1.14, even if you're uh, coding on 1.15. And I'm not sure what it is for other versions, but you can look that up really easily, I'm sure. Uh, and the last thing we need is depend. Now this is something we're not gonna use right now, but we may use it in the future. So I'm just gonna delete it actually, but I just wanna mention that if your plugin depends on another plugin, like for example, Essentials, if it hooks into Essentials, then you want to make sure that uh, the Spigot program loads Essentials first and then loads your plugin later. So what this is doing is, is essentially saying, these are the plugins that need to load before me. And you can specify those by having a bracket and putting Essentials, the name of the plugin, and that will make it a dependency. If you have multiple, you can add a comma, uh, there we go, and add like another uh, vault, for example. This will all add, a, a, you know, whatever dependencies you want. And I should mention that for authors, if you wanna add multiple, same sort of scenario, you just copy uh, into this bracket here, these brackets, add a comma, and then add, you know, more people like that. So uh, there we go. So I'm not gonna use dependencies, of course, because this is just a basic plugin, but just know that uh, this is something that you can use. All right, so our plugin is fully functional now, although it doesn't actually do anything. So what we're gonna do is go to our main class here, our tutorial class, or whatever you named your plugin class, and in the on enable method and the on disable method, we're just gonna send some basic messages to the console just so you can get some practice with that and also so we can tell ourselves that our plugin is actually working. So in the on enable method, one thing you can do is actually write messages to the console by typing get server dot get console sender dot send message. And in this send message uh, method, we're gonna actually add a string and this string is gonna be whatever is sent to the console. So I'm gonna send a very basic message that just says the name of our plugin and then says plugin is enabled. Uh, and in order to make this stand out in our console, I'm gonna add, actually add a chat color to it. And you can do that by uh, right before the string typing chat color dots. And you can notice that there's a ton of chat colors here. And let's choose green because it is enabled and then a plus. So just do chat color dot the name of your color plus and then your message. And this is gonna make sure it's green in the console. And if we copy this whole line here, right click, copy, and we paste it in on disable, uh, we can change the green to dot red. And we can change this message to plugin is disabled. So again, what this is doing is when the plugin is enabled, it's gonna tell the console to send a message saying, uh, the plugin is enabled in all green, but when it's disabled, when we close the server, it's gonna say plugin is disabled in all red. Now, in order to actually test your plugin, you're gonna have to actually get a build of it. So in order to do that, let's go up to file, save all, just to make sure all our code is saved. And if we go to file again, go to project structure, and inside of here, you're gonna see a artifacts uh, little area down here. Click on artifacts and it's probably gonna be empty for you. That's okay, hit the plus sign, hit jar, and go to from modules with dependencies. And this is just gonna bring up a little window here. Make sure your module is set to your project and you can leave everything else the same. Make sure it extracts to the target jar and hit okay. And the last thing we need to change is the output directory. So this is gonna be where your uh, plugin is gonna be output when it's built. Click on this file here, this browse file. Go to your server uh, that we just made in the last episode and just 
click on plugins because we want whenever your plugin is built to just immediately drop into your plugins folder just so you don't have to move them around hit okay hit apply and okay uh, and once that's done now every time you want to build your plugin you want to update it with your new code hit build build artifacts and the build button and it's going to build your plugin down here in the bottom corner and there we go it's done so now in order to check it if we go to our desktop uh, go to your plugins folder go to server and in our plugins folder there we go we can see that we do actually have our um our dot jar file our built plugin so this plugin is functional and it will load in uh, spigot and we can test it out now by going to server and just running the server real quick by double clicking the run.bat uh, and if you remember, we set it so that when the uh, server loads, when the plugin is enabled, it'll send a green message. So we're checking for that. And there we go, right here, tutorial, plugin is enabled, and it's an all green. And if we stop the server, for example, stop, there we go, it is working. It says tutorial, plugin is disabled in all red. All right, so that's gonna do it for this episode. Thanks guys so much for watching. Next time we'll be talking about events so we can do some pretty cool things with our plugin. And hopefully I'll see you guys in the next episode.